Welcome from the Tech ID Berlin 2016. I'm here with Dr. Stefan Bratzel, who's the director at the Center of Automotive Management in Germany. Um, Dr. Bratzel, thank you so much for being here today and welcome mm -hmm. to the conference. Do you mind briefly introducing yourself and tell us a bit more about your professional background? I'm a political scientist. Um, I've studied here in Berlin uh, at the Free University and uh, I was uh, for uh, many years uh, in the automotive industry as a product manager and uh, 10 years ago I founded an institute, Center of Automotive Management and there we do um, management oriented research uh, for the car and mobility industry mainly uh, in the innovation uh, sector, so we try to figure out and observe what are the innovations of the future and which tr uh, trends or innovations uh, in which uh, uh, sector and that's uh, what we try to figure out. Mm -hmm. And you presented a case study this morning about the long-term vision of autonomous driving. Tell us a bit more about that, what were your key aspects and key highlights and yeah. Well, I think um, that we have uh, what I would call a battle of the worlds. We have the world of the traditional established car manufacturer whose uh, main idea is uh, to sell cars that they produce. And on the other hand, we have uh, the new players, uh, new entrants of the in the mobility sector, the internet or uh, consumer electronic players uh, who think that the mobility business could be a very interesting uh, area to be and uh, what I try to um, figure out a bit uh, is uh, how the business models work and uh, the business model of the internet player in the mobility system uh, is quite easy. Uh, the idea is, uh, come on, we have not uh, 80, billion, 80 million uh, cars that we sell each year, we have a car fleet worldwide of 1 billion cars. Uh, cars and uh, if we uh, manage it uh, that we can charge uh, these uh, well, 1 billion cars that drive per year 10,000 kilometers, if we could charge only uh, 1 euro per kilometer then it's a business of uh, about 10 trillion um, euros and that's why they go into this business uh, and besides uh, the internet players try to use the travel time yeah, from autonomous, tra from autonomous uh, vehicles uh, and then they can capture this time and capture the customers and uh, can well sell them uh, whatever they like. You already mentioned the battle of the worlds with the OEMs on one side and the internet, what did you call them, internet manufacturers? The internet players. The yeah. internet players on the other side. What do you think will the future look like? Do you think it's um, mainly OEMs or is it like a corporation or are they still working together? What do you think the future will look like? Well, at the moment we have a situation, yeah, you can call it co-opetition, cooperation on the one side because yeah. the internet players are so strong and uh, all the uh, people want to take their smartphones in the car and uh, they have to work in the car. There's a cooperation here, but there's also a strong competition because it's about the car of the future and the mobility of the future. And what I think is that uh, the car industry has to take care uh, of their business model or have to change their business model and if they cooperate uh, too intensely with the internet players, uh, um, that could turn into a big problems because they uh, try to make their business themselves. So I uh, would advise on the one hand for the car manufacturers that they uh, try to uh, make their own ecosystems of mobility services uh, that go far beyond uh, the car um, uh, the car um, uh, mobility it's uh, a multimodal uh, mobility business they have to go into and uh, mobility services for the car manufacturers will only be one element of these uh, um, ecosystem. So what I think uh, is that the um, uh, players uh, of uh, mobile phones, uh, uh, I think they had an advantage uh, because uh, the uh, players uh, of the uh, industry, of the car industry has high capex of uh, uh, machines and uh, plants uh, and uh, they have their customers uh, who have 
certain expectations uh, <coughs> and they have their dealers and all that uh, don't have the uh, internet players and they can start from scratch and uh, uh, offer new things and that makes it uh, quite difficult for uh, the car manufacturers to go on and with autonomous driving I think uh, there could be a, a disruptive uh, scenario where we will have uh, for about uh, about 5% of new cars sold uh, in 2025 that could be uh, in part highly autonomous level 3 autonomous how we call them uh, and in uh, 2030 it could be 20% of them so there's a high risk also for the car manufacturers if this business doesn't take place within uh, their own industry Okay, and going away from the battle of the worlds, I'm really interested to know a bit more about your personal opinion. Where do you think are the biggest risks, uh, say, in the next five to ten years with regards to autonomous driving? Or, on the other side, where do you think are the biggest um, advantages of autonomous driving? Well, the biggest risk, or I would call them obstacles of uh, autonomous driving, are on the one hand, we have got, of course, the data security. Hackers go into connected cars and uh, um, yeah, and we have a lot of problems, of course, uh, then that uh, the data and uh, the driving security um, is in danger. That's one uh, big problem. Another big problem is uh, uh, the, ethic, uh, the ethics, uh, ethical question of uh, autonomous cars, because uh, Robot cars have to decide in critical situation uh, uh, whether they uh, uh, drive uh, against um, well a 70 year old or mm -hmm. against a mother with a child or uh, maybe uh, uh, the driver or the passenger itself is in danger and um, we have to just uh, tell the robot car uh, what is uh, the algorithm um, yeah in such a situation what to do then uh, and I think um, that's a quite difficult question and that yeah. could uh, be a big obstacle uh, especially for driverless cars. Yeah. You already mentioned quite a few critical scenarios. From your personal perspective, do you think you'll ever feel really, really comfortable of just getting in an autonomous car and feel absolutely fine? Well, actually I won't have a problem uh, if I know that the car is really safe. Okay. Of course, uh, as we um, uh, yeah, are very used to uh, driving the cars ourselves. Uh, we are unused in uh, driverless uh, cars, but uh, I think that would change very rapidly. And uh, I personally have no problem uh, to uh, go as a passenger into a driverless train already, and uh, uh, you get used to it. And same would be with driverless cars, uh, I'm pretty sure. Good. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. I really appreciate that. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thanks.